In the previous module, Ed provided an overview of the application on which this video series focuses. Let's dip our toes into the world of tag helpers by starting with labels and date pickers. We'll replace standard HTML label elements with ASP.NET Core label tag helpers. We'll also replace HTML datetime local input elements with Kendo date picker tag helpers. In the home index view, there are two daytime local input elements. You'll see those on lines 21 and 28. There's a couple of problems with these in their current form. First problem is the user experience of those date pickers will differ across browsers. What the user sees in Chrome will differ from what the user sees in Edge, for example. It would be much better to provide a consistent user experience no matter what browser is being used. The second problem we have here is the date pickers aren't associated with a model property. Therefore, we can't get or set date picker values from the server. The Kendo date picker widgets solve these problems. So the first change we'll make here, let's go down to line 21, and we will comment this out for now. On this very next line, we will add a kendo date picker um, tag helper. So we'll type kendo dash date. Control space will activate IntelliSense here. I'll choose kendo date picker. And um, the very first property I want to set on this is the for property. It's this for property that is associating this uh, tag helper with a property in the order search criteria model that is bound to this view. And also in this case, I will get IntelliSense because the for attribute is scoped to the model that is bound to this view. Um, that model type in this case is order search criteria, which you see at the very top of the screen on line one. And so if I type in this case stats, you see IntelliSense comes up and it's actually the stats from property that I want to use here. And I'll select that. I also want to replicate the behavior of the input control that was there before. And you see that that is setting the current date to January 1st, 1996. And I'll actually set that in a very similar way using the value attribute. But again, this is executing server side. So we're going to take advantage of the date time object here. So new date time. And we will say, uh, year 1st, 1996, um, 1, 1, close that. All right, that is um, the tag helper equivalent to the input control that you saw on line 21. If I copy that line, we're going to do very much the same thing down here to replace this other input control. Only difference here is going to be I'm binding this to a different property in the model, stats to instead of stats from, and the year here is going to be a little different, uh, two years later. And we'll save that. We're not done with this, uh, with the changes in here quite yet. There's one more problem that exists. We have these labels, and you're, you're seeing one label on line 17, another label on line 25. They aren't currently associated with uh, the date pickers here. They're also not associated with anything in the model. We would like to make those associations, and that can again be done with tag helpers. And in this case, we're going to take advantage of the ASP.NET Core label tag helper. And it's a very simple change. We just say ASP-4 equals, and again, this is scoped to the model order search criteria. We're going to select the same property here, stats from, the same property that we used for the tag helper down here. We will make the same kind of change to this other label, ASP-4 equals stats2. Save those changes, and we can clean up the lines we commented out here. Those are no longer needed. And let's run this application just to see what that gives us. 
All right, so the application is pulling up here. On the left side of the screen, what you're going to notice is two date picker widgets. Each of them have a label associated with them. Stats from, stats to, and sure enough, these were initialized to the dates that we defined in the new date time statements. There's one other thing, if we close this application, that I wanted to point out here. Again, one of the benefits of using tag helpers in this case is I can, for example, right-click the property name in this attribute, choose Go to Definition, and it now has knowledge of the backing property there in the C-sharp code. In the next module, Ed will better organize team member names in the app by adding a simple tree view tag helper.